Well, hello, everybody. Long time no see. I'm Jordy Jordan, one of the hosts of Local Live. Um, if you're seeing this video as supplementary, um, I don't make YouTube videos that often anymore, so this is one out usually. But I've seen this comment right here pop up on the uh, Local subreddit, and I wanted to go ahead and talk about it, but since I was one of the third parties that was actually there when this thing happened. And I normally wouldn't talk about something like this, but cat's out of the bag. This is something that's like, okay, this just makes Boogie look bad. But people are taking this and spinning it in a much darker light. And don't take what I'm saying as like defending Boogie, especially with like all the things that's happened to him lately. You know, faking a cancer diagnosis, you know, threatening to self-delete, um, numerous other things out there there's a lot of things to be mad about boogie about but i'm gonna say this isn't really one of them i mean you could be a little mad but boogie didn't really do anything wrong at least from my from what i witnessed and we'll get to that in the story but i want to go ahead and talk about boogie's child being blackout drunk for those of you who are unaware or out of the role or just don't pay attention to this part of like my YouTube like persona, um, Boogie is a co-host or was a co-host on the Local Live with me. He's a 50-year-old man and he is dating a 21-year-old. 21-year-old that pretty much needs to, him to be like a father figure, right? Like she can't drive. She has she doesn't keep up with her own license doesn't really have work that kind of thing right she's still like all in effective manner a, a child right a, a teenager that still needs like some guidance so here's what actually happened right we went on a trip to buffalo and the trip to buffalo was to go to keem keem stars fourth of july party we get there two or three days early with the idea that you know we're going to try to film some content do things just kind of have a little getaway and me and boogie we get an airbnb up in upstate new york and um a lot of people are confused by the timeline of things i stated that i heard boogie and his significant other sleeping together and that was on the first night that was there was no alcohol no weed nothing like that took place at the airbnb it just didn't happen they didn't bring it me and my wife do not partake in it. Nothing like that happened. I wouldn't allow it to happen because one, I'm the one who rented the Airbnb and I'd be the one for the cleaning deposit and shit like that. Not happening, didn't happen, right? Um, where the story gets muddy is on the 4th of July party. Granted, me and my wife, we showed up around six o'clock. Boogie and his girlfriend showed up around two. So there's like a four hour difference from when we got there to when things happen. But I will say this, from two to six, the four hours me and my wife were not there, she was cognizant and outgoing and she was not inebriated at that point when we reached, the, got there at six o'clock, right? So here's what happened. This party was a family gathering of Keemstar's friends and family. So there was a deck on it in the deck is where most of like the YouTube content creators hung out, right? There was like 10 of us and we all kind of like got there. So we had something in common to talk about. Everybody kind of knew each other. It was, it was easier than trying to associate with like people that you're never probably going to meet again that are closer to Dan Keemstar. So like we all hung out at the table, Desi and Boogie were there. Boogie was there pretty much all night. Right. The only time Boogie really got up was to go get something to drink or something to eat until the fireworks happened. Like Boogie wasn't trying to get her to drink shots. He wasn't trying to push drinks on her. There was no marijuana at the table or anything like that. What ended up happening <clears throat> is Desi didn't know anybody at the YouTube table, didn't really talk. But she wanted to go hang out with the girls, so she went and hung out with the girls. So all the girls got together. They went off. They went rode four-wheelers, rode in cyber trucks, went to the fire, you know, whatever they did, right? There was, a, there, was a, there was a bevy of things that happened that could have been happened at the party, and that's just what happened, right? She went off. 
about two hours later, she gets carried back to Boogie, and she's in a blackout state of drunk, right? And it's it's not just a regular state of drunk. It's a, I've partaked in multiple substances drunk, right? It's a mixture of, like, I would say, like, marijuana and alcohol, right? <clears throat> and when she gets to the table... She's falling over on herself. Like they sit her down, and the first thing she does is head down on the onto the table, right? And Boogie, and let, let me kind of like preface Boogie's like social experience, right? And I'm, I'm I'm gonna say this as well, and I'm talking in circles. Boogie has the maturity level of about a 21 year old. Boogie's been a five to six hundred pound man most of his life. And he's lived his most of his life in front of the computer. You can say the same thing about me, because the last 17 years I've been doing this as a job. But there was a period in my life where, like, I actually socialized and was out in the world and had a job outside of YouTube and stuff. But <clears throat> Boogie had never came across somebody that was this blackout drunk. So, and I want to preface this, right, in, like, I have some first aid knowledge and I'm going to explain the criteria of why I did what I did. Um, I worked at a company called Met Glass and I was on the first response team and first response, you learn about how to do like CPR, signs of heat stroke, how to do like makeshift tourniquets, that kind of thing, right? To be on the first response team. So you basically, if somebody got hurt, you can, you can, take care of them until actual medical care got to them. Other things, like I was studying to go into the field of the paramedic for a little bit right after my weight loss surgery. And also I helped my brother study for his exams to be a paramedic in the military. And none of this means I'm certified to do anything with medicine, right? This is just things I've done in my life that helped me notice signs of things, right? And with that being said, I noticed that she looked like she had alcohol poisoning. Like she had drank more than her body weight and like she was well past just, hey, I'm drunk. So what I did is I checked her pulse and her pulse was low. It was like 30 beats a minute or something like that. 30 or 40 beats a minute. It's hard to tell. I was I was using an Apple watch to time it. Um, and she was completely wanting to vomit. She, she wanted to vomit and stuff like that. She couldn't sit up. So what we did is I moved her to like a bench that was on the deck and I laid her on her side and I told Boogie to sit with her and keep her head up, keep her head so she doesn't lay on her tummy or on her back. And we got a trash bag for her to vomit in. So she, she showed other signs of like alcohol poisoning, like flush confusion, things of that nature. She didn't really, she couldn't really speak in sentences. Um, but me not having any kind of like medical degree or any like certified medical training, I didn't want to make the call, but like, hey, we probably need to take her to the emergency room and get her on an IV. So what ended up happening was me, well, actually not me, me myself, but my wife, Kelly, went around the party looking for somebody that had some type of medical training, right? So we found this one girl that was basically a home help nurse, and she came and sat with Desi for a long time. I don't remember her name. I don't think I've been asked her name, but she sat with Desi probably about three hours. And um, in those three hours, Desi vomited probably half a gallon. <laughs> I don't know. Like, there was a 13-gallon bag, trash bag, and she vomited, like, a good bit, more than a glass full, into the bottom of this bag. But after about th three hours, she started to get better where she start she wasn't as confused and stuff. And, um, and at that point, somebody came in that was actually a registered nurse, and he checked her out, and... Um, he said she would be fine as long as she knew like her birth date and things like that. And by the time me and my wife left, it was right around 11 o'clock, right? Because me and my wife were sitting there 
waiting to make sure we didn't have to take Desi to the emergency room because one, I love Boogie. Trust me, I, I love the guy to death, but he's he, he's an emotional manipulator. He doesn't like to move, right? He did it, like if he can avoid moving, he does it, right? So like, me and my wife went and got his car, brought it around to the front of the house because there was like a banded lot that off like two properties over that you had to walk through a field to get to where you parked your car. So we brought Boogie's car over so he didn't have to walk very far. And we sat there waited in case we needed to drive Desi to the emergency room if she got worse or not. But once she got better, we said, okay, she's good. She's talking. She's interacting like a normal person again. Me and my wife left around 11, 11.30 that night. So we were there four and a half hours. And when we left, she was cognizant and good. So their boogie stayed about another hour after we left. And I know this basically by the time he got home. So like I, I can't account for that hour after we left. So what I did is I reached out to Mudahar. And what I got back from Mudahar was, I'm not going to show this on screen because I don't really show like Twitter DMs. But Mudahar basically stated that, hey, I, he didn't see it, He but he wasn't at the deck. He went to see the cyber trucks and things like that so as far as i know boogie never pushed drinks onto the girl he basically allowed her to be herself she wouldn't hung out with people that she that, that, that you know the other girls at the party they got a lit they, they drank a little too much she's new to drinking um she kind of like cross con cr i don't know the word cross contaminated different substances and she did a little too much, and she was on, and, and like, and like, it got to the point where it's like, okay, this is kind of bad. But Boogie spent the rest of that evening sitting by her side, doing the best he could. Boogie had no no knowledge whatsoever how to fix it, right? And this video isn't to make Boogie seem good or bad or whatever it is. This is just me telling my side of the story, how I seen it and what actually happened and if you're this far in the video hit the like button for me all right guys i'll see you later